first we have Jacques Moreau. He is a tomb robber, a thief, and a scoundrel. Jacques has lived his life with singular focus on collecting wealth. Sadly to date, this has gained him little more than a missing eye and a growing bitterness. Throughout his travels, he has developed a network of black market contacts and a thirst for vengeance on the man who took his eye. He's also come to realize that although he may not always be on the right side of the law, he enjoys his freedoms and will stand up to fight back the spread of darkness. All right. Combat of five, agility of two, cunning of three, lore of three, wounds of five, and a defense of one. All right. He starts in Cairo. We'll, won't get into all the details on all of them. Let's look at our next hero here. Is Sharon Hunter. She is a daring photographer. Hailing from the big city. Sharon Hunter has set out from New York to photog uh, photograph the exotic parts of the world unknown. With a spirit of adventure and an artful eye, she is tenacious in her quest to capture the great American tale and to find her own sense of heroics. But she may have gotten more than she bargained for as she comes to realize that there is real evil in the world and a need for real heroes to stand against the darkness. So she starts in New York, of course. She has a combat of three, agility three, cunning three, lore three. No defense, but seven wounds. Next up, Duke Dudley is a British lord. A wealthy British lord and in international playboy. Duke Dudley of the House of Dud has led a carefree life, wanting for nothing. Coming from a long line of military men, his father was killed in the Great War against the Kaiser when the Duke was only a boy, leaving him a substantial fortune, as well as a hatred for the German military. Now, as the Nazis grow in power, Duke Dudley has taken it upon himself to foil their efforts for world domination. If the Crown wants to take a stand against tyranny, the Duke will. His uh, combat is three, agility three, cunning three, lore of four. He has one defense and five wounds, and of course starts in London. And last but not least, we have Angel Espinosa. She's a grease monkey. Growing up a young girl in Mexico City, Angel Espinosa never quite fit in with the other kids. Referring to Tinker in her father's garage, taking apart and rebuilding anything she could get her hands on. Her father was killed by a group of bandits in the Yucatan. She inherited his workshop and his curiosity for the greater world abroad. With a talent for quick thinking and technical know-how, Angel loves nothing more than the to create new gadgets and gizmos and then find a new adventure to try them out on. All right, she will start in Mexico City Combat of four, agility three, cunning three, a lore of only two, but she does have one defense and five wounds. And that will be our heroes this game. Let's set up the board. Okay, so I want to show you what I've got going on. I've got uh, a small box to set my camera on. I have some things set up along the table because it takes up so much room. And then I got this second table out to do the heroes and the villains on. That way I can switch between because this takes up a lot of room. So let's start the setup. Okay, so here we have the uh, equipment for the mob that is the enemy faction that we are playing against. They start with the headquarters in Chicago and then another outpost and we will randomly select that in a moment. And if this is ever destroyed, we must uh, create a new headquarters for them. Here are the uh, Minion, if you want to call it, the mob reserve. These are the bosses, and this is the the event deck that will determine the actions they take on their turns. So here we have the villains. We have the uh, Crimson Hand, the Nazi Party, and then here are the mob. So in this game, we will have two main villain leaders. 
but we'll leave these out because there could be an instance where one of these will appear for a moment to fight and then leave the game. But the two main villains will be Mikey the Hammer and oh Vanessa Love. All right. Since I drew this card first, okay. And it's weird because this is supposed to be Mikey with the bat, and here he has a shotgun. But that's Mikey. Okay. He will be the one that will go onto the board in a moment, and she will be the one that will just sit off to the side ready for the next turn. Okay. Now we need to finish setting up the board. So here in Chicago is where the mob headquarters will always start. Then we have this token here. Anytime you need to do something random, you just grab a location and it gives you a city here. So Hong Kong, it gives you a little mini map to kind of show you. So this will start in Hong Kong and in the villain phase will generate them money. So we go all the way over to here in Hong Kong. It's a port city and there is an expansion. And I think we're going to try that this game as well. So uh, since the mob, it kind of goes with the uh, whole mythos noir where they control the docks and, and control the price of goods in the game. So we're going to use that expansion also. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have these dock tokens. And you just mix these up. And some of them are good. Uh, just a little more than half. You have like one free fortune or draw an ally. Here's a double cross where you would lose one money or lose an ally, such like that. And there are some where you have to fight special monsters like a Crimson Hand. And if you want it, you could take them out, make the game easier. Uh, you could take out some of the good ones if you want it. But I'm just going to leave them all in and mix them all up and spread them around. So I have the dock tokens out on the board. It, uh, oop, and there's one. Locations with a dock. There are more tokens than there are locations on the board. When you just explore one, you do not immediately restock it. You only do that when you are told to shuffle the city deck. So I'm going to put this next to those dock tokens so that maybe I can remember that. There we go. So let's look now at our starting relics. First we have the city. Oh, now look, it is right here. It has a temple symbol, and it says to escape you have a lore of five plus. There is two danger there. We'll get to that in a moment. I'll be playing by the temple rules uh, for adventuring and collapse that came with the Crimson Hand expansion. And let's see what we have here. Of the Azure Jewel. So, danger of two. This is used in the, when the uh, crim, Crimson Hand is your enemy, so we're not worried about that. But we have a temple, so we draw a location, and it is going to be, we ignore this, it is going to be in the Heartland. So we take this along with this and put it in the Heartland. It's just off camera there. Let's see if I can zoom, uh, spin around. There you go. You can see it over there at the Heartland near Chicago area. And with temples, it has a coin listed, so I'll put five there. There we go. Because every time you pass one of the dangers to get in there, you'll get a coin. All right, let's see what else we have. The mine, oh, we have another temple. And apparently some of my cards are stuck together and I had uh, a few mix-ups there, so... Let's see where the mine is going. It is the mine of the gods. So five, six, seven, eight, because it is a temple. That's why you go ahead and put the money right there. Then we need to draw a card. And we have the Yucatan. That's in Central America. So I'll just do that. Grab a temple. And it's off camera. We'll, we'll look at the board uh, one more time before we start to play. So let's see. Now we have 
the axe of the cursed eye. No allies may be used while at this adventure. Wow. So you, if you have an ally card, they can't help you retrieve the axe. It's not a temple, so you only get the money if you sell the item. And this one is in South, very south of uh, South America at the Devil's Reach. Okay, so this will go there. And let's see what else we have. Jorango, or Jargano, the gloves of Jargano. And it is just a four. Let's see where it is going. It is in Russia. Okay. And now you might be able to see here, uh, board is split up. This says Russia and that says Siberia. So it tells you exactly where it goes on the board. Now, if you remember at the beginning, we, this was the first enemy boss we selected, first villain. So you look four, five, eight, ten. Since this is the largest, this is the one he's going to go after. So I'm going to put him on the board next to the Red Skull. And that is in the Heartland, near the mob headquarters in Chicago. So that kind of makes sense, right? Let's say this had been an 8. These are tied. Then you look at these numbers to see which one. They're going to go to the least dangerous that's worth the most money. And if it was still a tie, then you just pick. So then you could put them anywhere you want. But there we go. She will wait a turn before she comes out. She's going to stay on her player board. Jacques does not get to start with any extra equipment or gear, but he may buy gear and common items for one less than normal. But unfortunately, with us playing against the mob and they control the docks, you have to spend two more. So for him, it'd only be one more to buy gear. Also, he's greedy. So for us to win, he must have two extra gold or in a cooperative game, which is this two more per hero so that's four so now we need 48 so i'm going to put that there to remind me because he's so greedy okay he starts in cairo so i will put him on the board next if i can slide this down without messing up too much sorry about the glare sharon she gets to start the game with an ally card I've already shuffled this some. Let's shuffle a little more. And all of her allies have plus one loyalty, which is great because the mob are constantly trying to bribe off or uh, kill off your allies. So she gets the damsel. She is an ally female social. Gives me agility plus one. That's nice. And if you activate her, you gain three adventure dice for any female fatale test. Fem fatale test. Well, that's that's great because Vanessa Love is one of our villains. Or you gain three fight dice for one fight round against a female enemy or villain. So that's nice. She has a three loyalty, so now she has a four. But when you activate this, like once per round or whatever, one of the abilities of the mob is that you must roll to see if they are been paid, bought off, or if they've been... Uh, taken out so let's put her there and we will start her in new york let's move on to dudley here dudley will start the game with a gear card and one fortune all right so we're already one way uh one point and in the game since we're playing fully cooperative we will share the money so i can simply put that right there that'll come in handy and he gets the game he gets to start the game with the gear card same as with the allies these are random you can buy these throughout the game at at cities but we will shuffle up and get one Let's see what we get the wrench well angel needs this combat a plus one you can discard to cancel an event villain event or city card wow throw a monkey wrench into their plans huh so that's pretty good there we go he also gains plus two fight dice when fighting a nazi opponent and we'll start in london so we will put him on the board now we have angel so she may buy gear cards for two less glory so basically in this game she's going to be paying regular price 
that would be super effective against any of the other villain uh, enemies. But she can add two adventure dice during any tech or trap test, so that's also awesome. She will start in Mexico City. We are also going to be playing with personal mission cards. Now, the way they work is at the beginning of the game, each hero will be dealt two. You choose one to keep. After you complete it, you can draw another one, but you only get to draw one. So let's do this for Jacques, and I'll do the other ones off camera. So we draw two. So he has the mission to recover a death artifact, and this would be his reward. Or have two artifacts in your possession at the same time. Now this is dangerous because there's always a chance you could get knocked out or uh, the enemy could uh, steal them from you. Just for doing that, you could turn this in and get three glory, or three fortune, I'm sorry. And then from this, from now on, gain plus two adventure dice on all tests with the death. This is really a shame. He doesn't really like either one of these because there are none of these out at the moment. None. So, I guess if he teams up, he might could, since he's greedy, he could take the artifacts. But that might help us out. So let's let him start with that. And then, if we decide that that is not working out for the team, we can have him get another personal mission and discard that. So, um, we've got the camera going. Let's go ahead and do all of them here. Let's do Sharon's personal mission. She can. Sorry about that. I'll probably be rearranging stuff as a play, too, trying to figure out the best way to do this. She can recover a an armor artifact, a shield. And there is one on the board right now. And it is the, the gloves. She would get a defense of plus one. That's pretty nice. She could also get a green sidekick ally. Now, this is not an ally. It does not say ally right there. It does, or it does say ally. It does not say sidekick. Okay, it does not say sidekick, and she would get glory of two at the start of each turn. Whoa, that's impressive. This one could be done pretty easily, and it would raise her defense up, which would let her not take damage in fights. But getting two glory each turn, plus all of her allies have better loyalty. Ooh. May have to think about that for just a moment. Hmm. Let me think. While this is impressive and it works great for her, she can get extra glory. She can fly for less money. She could buy items and, and trade them to players. This one is already out available. So I can kind of, this will give us a direction to go with her. So let's do that, plus it'll get her a defense, and with that many hit points, she's the only one with no defense. That would be amazing. That would help in combat. All right, let's go with Dudley. Duke Dudley. You can defeat a mob enemy in combat. Wow, that, that would be very easy. Recover a magic artifact. And then from now on, you gain plus two adventure dice while at any magic. And... There is one on the board. It is the same as hers. Now, this is less than a 1 in 4 chance that these will come up, which would be nice. They could team up, go for the gloves, because the gloves are an armor and a magic. Where this one would be quick and easy to complete. Hmm. But it's just one. It's just one. He already started the game with one. I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to do this. And I'm going to try to get them to team up and go after the gloves uh, really early. That will give us a direction to go. So let's see what Angel has. Set, sell an artifact in a minor city. Because when you sell it in a minor city, you don't get the extra gold that you would in a major city. You draw a gear card and an ally card. That is amazing. For one less fortune, successfully sneak past a villain without them finding you, or defeat a villain in combat by doing more hits to them than they do to you. Well, that sounds pretty awesome, too. Two money. I think I'm going to go for this. Now, I've, I've passed up all of the rewards that gave Fortune, 
which is what we are trying to do is get 48 fortune. So I hope I haven't made a mistake, but that's what we're going to start with. So here's what the board looks like. I'm going to make a couple of small changes. If I had little stands for them to stand up in, it might not be as bad. Now this one, you can tell where it's at because it is next to a temple, but it is hard to see on the board. And this is a similar color to the dock tokens. So on camera, it is really hard to uh, see that. So let's just swap that out. Now this is another red skull, but the eyes are not glowing. But that should show up. And I'm looking on camera. Oh yeah, that, that shows up much better. So I will change that out. Although I do like the way those blue skulls look. It's pretty cool. Also, right there is the Russian artifact in black. And it is... It's not as hard to see in person, but on camera, it is very hard to see, especially with a little bit of glare coming in off of these uh, uh, snowy mountains and such. So let's replace that. That will show up really well. So I think now, so we have one, two, three, four. I think they show up really well. And if you remember, we wanted to try to get uh, Dudley and Sharon to team up and go for the gloves and that is out here in Russia so she can fly cheaper he can move they can get there and right now there's no enemy there it's also one of the cheaper ones so they're not gonna be uh, competing the next largest one is gonna be here at the mine so I think Angel's right there close might have to get her to go there all right Stick around, we're going to come back and start the game. Now, I've moved stuff around and spread them out some, so I can't get them all on camera at the same time. But what we're going to do is we're going to pretend this is uh, to move around, right? An adventure costs money. So the green will be for movement, and the white will be for our initiative. Now, since it's a co op game, you can actually perform in any order but by rolling the initiative die you still get the advantage of possibly getting an event card so we're going to do that so this will always be the event die this will always be the movement die so let's see and he did roll a one if you get a one on either die you can draw an event card and that's what he would do because most of the event cards are really helpful let's look at Sharon here one of each. Okay. Lots of movement. Now I'm going to slide down over here. And we'll take a look at Dudley and Angel. Now, in the future, I won't do this every time. We may just roll all of them on camera at the same time. There we go. Now, What I'm going to do, since I'm playing cooperative, I'm just going to go straight down the line. And every turn, I'm going to go Jacques, Sharon, Duke, and Angel, just so that I don't miss anyone or mess up. And then this will be their movement. But I'm still going to roll the dice. So Jacques and Angel will get to draw an event card. Since he went first and rolled a one, let's see what he gets for an event. Oh, play immediately. So I must place a mobster thug into two random cities on the board. Limit one per city. Two random cities. Ouch. And then this says to shuffle the event deck. Okay. Here are two mobster thugs. Random cities. We have Cairo. Well, that not that lovely? That's what he gets, right, for being so greedy. And Berlin. Let's put the other in Berlin. Now we must immediately... All right. No. Since it'd be random anyway, it wouldn't really matter. I'm not going to worry about drawing hers before I shuffle. So... Angel gets this. I've got an idea. 
play on any hero to give them plus two cunning or plus two lore for one test or fight round. So she can hold on to that. That's pretty good. So I'm going to put that over here with her stuff. Okay. Now we can handle uh, movement and then get ready for adventure. Now normally during movement, if you enter a space with any kind of figure, you must immediately stop. It, I haven't found anything specifically, but this mobster is in Cairo with him. And this begins the movement phase. So his movement, I'm going to say, must immediately end. And he must have a fight outside of his normal turn, like right now, against them. So here is what we will do. We will do three for the mobsters. Uh, this card represents the just the thugs. He has a combat of five. And I don't see that he does not have any kind of bonuses at this time. All right. Let's get ready to fight this mob. I have moved his player card over here. He has five wounds with one defense. And apparently, they do not have a defense. And they're not in one of their uh, hideouts or headquarters. So, we will roll all of the dice at the same time. A four, five, and a six is a success. So, they have two successes. And Jacques has four successes. Now he has a defense of one. There's two successes, one, two, in this fight round. He will block one of them, so he receives one wound. He did four damage to them. They only have four wounds, one, two, three, four, so he won. He knocked them out, so they are gone. We will remove this figure, and this is a good thing because if, if, uh, the all eight of these are on the board and we need to put another one out they gain uh victory point also if you draw a card and you have to put one where one already is they get a point so it's good to knock them out he got this guy also right here he receives three glory okay and this is a little strange at first. This is your currency in the game. You use this to uh, recruit allies and gear and such. And the gold is the fortune that you're going for. Okay. Let's clean this up and we'll be right back and continue the turn. Now in this game, they do share the fortune. They're trying to get 48 to win the game. But the glory they must use individually and keep. Now, he could buy an item or something and then meet up with someone and give them that item, but he cannot give them his glory. He must keep that for himself. So, Angel will move just here. And she's going to stop because she will be doing an adventure trying to start recovering this. Okay? And kind of went out of order, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to move all of them. He has only two movement. His first movement must be here to come out of the city, and then he can go here to Western Europe. So that is his movement. He is not in the city. He is just out in Western Europe. Now, she is in New York, and it is right on this divider line, so she could go to Canada or North America. It doesn't really matter in my case because it's going to wind up being the same number of points. So one to move out here. Now, this is normally three. She gets a discount of one. So it's one, two, three, four. And this is all one big region. And then five. And she's not going to go into the city. She's going to go six into Eastern Europe. So since she did not go into the city space, with the mobster. She did not have to stop and fight him. Everyone's moved. Let's do the adventure phase. So Jacques is up. He never got to leave Cairo. Now if you notice it is a smaller icon and it's silver compared to say Paris which is a larger icon and it is a gold colored or bronze colored. So this is considered a minor city in this game. So he will not have a major city encounter. Rather he will simply draw a card from the city deck. It's a shakedown. 
you must immediately lose D3 fortune or one gear card. Now, the way I read this, you can choose one gear or D3 or fortune, but you cannot choose something that you do not have. If you have one of them, you must choose that. And this D3, now the way that works, a 1 and a 2 would be a 1, a 3 and a 4 would be a 2, and a 5 and a 6 would be 3. But he has glory, but he has no fortune, and he has one gear. Actually, he does have a fortune. Oh, we started the game with one fortune because of Dudley, and we pool our fortune. So no matter what I roll, we will lose that fortune. So discard that, and I will remove the fortune over here off the table. Next up, like I said, I'm going to go in order, would be Sharon. She is not in a city. She is not on an artifact. She is not in this anywhere, but just out in the wilderness. So what you do is you roll a die. Just roll a die. She got a three. So on a one, something bad would happen. Two or three, nothing. Four, five, or six, you get to draw an event. So she just had nothing going on. She's just out wandering around. Let's try... Dudley now, he is here in Western Europe. Nothing happened to him. So now we're going to go to Angel. Let's check out what, uh, her adventure. Since her adventure takes place with a temple, this shows the instability of the temple. Not necessarily how many you have to uh, surpass. You only get to completely finish this if you grab all of the money. Okay? So, we start by grabbing an adventure. Now, this is two-sided. Okay, I tried to have the deck so I can slide this off. Here is her adventure. Let's see if I can get this to focus in. So, I have a stowaway on a cargo ship. That must have been how I got there. So, I wait until no one is looking and I slip by in the shadows. Or I disguise myself as a dock worker to get aboard and hope they don't ask questions. So, I can try an agility or a cunning. So, let's look at her card. Her agility is a three. Her cunning is a three. So we're just going to get to roll three dice no matter which we choose. So if we look at this, we have to roll a four or higher four times or a five or higher twice. But we're only rolling three dice at a time. So I would like to just... She's already a great mechanic. She could pass as a dock worker. But maybe she's a little timid because uh, she knows about automobiles more than boats and dock work and she's just going to use her agility so place that there I will take three dice for her agility so all I need is a four or higher all right we had two. Oh, I could have passed the cunning on the first try wow all right but that's not what we did she gets one, two successes. As long as you get one success, you get to pick up all of your dice again and roll again. Ooh, barely. Come on, Angel. Slip through those shadows. Yes. So we have four successes. We have completed this Danger Adventure, right here. Okay? And we get three glory. So we will just put that over on her uh, card here. Now, we can choose to keep adventuring or stop now. Now, since she passed a danger and we're in a temple, this is a slightly different rule, she did go ahead and grab some small fortune lying around in the temple. Now, if I stopped, I could go ahead and take these, and then I'd have to do another turn, or I can press my luck. Why not? Let's just press our luck one time. Why not? Why not? Let's try another adventure. So those will sit there. Now we're in a maze of caves. Find your way through the cavernous maze or attempt to decipher the ancient markings scratched into the walls. Well, cunning with six or more? No, she only gets to roll three dice, so lore. Oh, she only gets to roll two dice. 
but five. Oh, maybe we should have stopped and taken our glory. All right, we're going to try the lore. I'm going to switch and get some new dice. She only has two lore. Come on, five or six, five or six. Yes, oh, yes, she passed it first try. Oh, my goodness, and that is three glory for that, and she immediately gains, since she's in a temple, she immediately gains one fortune. We're going to camp down. She's going to camp down right there. So she's going to end her turn. That means she gets to collect all of the glory that she had earned this turn. So I'll put that on her card. And that will end the first adventure turn for the heroes. Okay, he has a search of four. So we will simply take four dice. And on a four, five, or six, he will pass in the temple. So he has two passes, but he has two ones. Now, normally ones would cause uh, a wound. He gets them on ones or two because he's he's a little bit bigger and clumsier, I guess. Okay, so he's going to take two wounds. So he got two successes. He will get two money. Now, nothing right now happens with that fortune. We'll get to that in a moment. I'll put that up there on the villain track that's just off camera. Okay, but... He also took two wounds. Now, he has a defense of one, but when you're in temples adventuring and such like that, these are un-ignored uh, damage. You, you cannot block it. He, get, he takes two full wounds. So I'll put that over on his player card. This uh, will end the adventure phase, but... I did things out of order a little bit this first turn since I had the camera here. So now let's go back and do the rest of the villain phase. Okay, so I have these coins here to remind me of special events that go on with the character, the mob. And here is his two wounds on his card. So first you're supposed to do a villain event, which may have you do some of these things. You'll do the hideout. And then the characters will take an action. Now he's already taken his action. Her action, her only action, since she is over here... She's ready to deploy. She will go to the highest valued artifact that does not currently have an enemy there. So that will be the mine, which is the other temple. So I'm going to put her on the board now. So let's go. Villain event. It says Vile Tactics. Roll once on the Vile Organization's Tactics chart. Then move the villain track one step forward. Oh, this is horrible. So, we flip this over. Here is the Mob Tactics. That is the Vile Organization we are playing this game. So, we roll a die. We got a two. New hideout. Place a new mob hideout in a random city. If there's already a hideout there or the mob headquarters in that city, you redraw, so we're guaranteed to get one, okay? So I grab the location, and we have London, so we will put another hideout token in London. Oh, this is awful. And that step comes first. Let me show you on the car. Here, you do the draw a villain event, and it, it told us to roll. So now we do the outpost or the zeppelin step if we're playing with the war zeppelin. So we will do the outpost step. Then the villains take their turn. We've already done that. So let's do the outpost and see what happens. And it says here. Okay, I moved it over here. Hopefully that will show up better. It says right here, during the outpost step of the villain phase. Now if you remember, we did the villain phase first. We drew a card and it told us to put another outpost step. So now we have two. Each hideout on the board will generate one fortune for the villains through its illegal operations of money laundering and racketeering. All right, so let's go to the board and see what that looks like. They have one here in London, one over here in Hong Kong, so they will generate two fortune. So this goes here. Now, as soon as they have three that I can remove, one, two, three, this will go back into the pool of usable 
fortune, they move up one toward victory. Also, the villain tactic card we drew said to move this up one. So they are already at two out of, I believe, 15 for victory. Ouch. Okay, so that's the end of the first full round. And a couple things I want to mention. We've got Vanessa Love out there uh, going for the temple that um, Angel is at. The other thing, and this is upsetting me. I don't know why I didn't catch this earlier. I might would have changed different adventure cards. But the shield and the, and the magic are on the same item. Even though the heroes can work together to recover it, only one of them can actually recover the item which means I cannot complete both quests at the same time with this one, which is upsetting. So I'm going to have to split them up, and I think I'm going to send Dudley over here to try and slow him down at the temple and let her get this to complete her quest to get that defense. Having one defense for fighting is really great. So that's it for the first round. Come back, and we'll go through the rounds much quicker now.